Welcome to Blank Slate. Wow, I'm impressed that you stuck around after that. That was a truly horrible opening. But the truth is, elements of that opening used to be the way to go. Now we simply watch it and cringe. What was great yesterday is meme-worthy today. You have to stay on top of current trends if you're going to communicate effectively to your customer. Now, if opening up After Effects is intimidating to you, consider downloading some modern templates. They'll help you stay on top of current trends and demystify some of the elements of After Effects. Don't use templates. Okay, I guess it's time for us to introduce Senior Airman JT Armstrong to the set. Hey, how's it going? Fantastic, how are you? I'm good, good. Thanks for coming out here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, first thing I gotta ask you though, why are you anti-template? Well, I wouldn't exactly say I'm anti-template. I think there's a right and a wrong time to use templates. I always prefer to be original, make everything in After Effects if possible, but sometimes there is that crunch time where you have a deadline and you just have to use a template. Okay, I can't really argue with you on that as much as I'd like to. Um, now, if you haven't had a chance to watch the print and web graphics tutorial yet, pause here and watch that episode first, because in that episode, we talk about universal principles of design that are going to apply to this episode as well. So um, now let's give you a proper introduction. So Senior Airman J.T. Armstrong, you are currently enrolled in the military journalism program at Syracuse, and how is that going? Oh, I love it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's a pretty unique program, huh? Absolutely. Very cool. Now, you were originally a photographer in the Air Force. Yes. You worked video. I know you did that as well, but your passion is motion graphics. And why is that? What do you love about motion graphics? Well, as you said, I love video and I love graphics, so the ability to combine those two mediums together to be able to tell a story or make a message is just a lot of fun. Um, again, you actually created the Blank Slate intro for the whole series, which you did on your own time, and I greatly appreciate that. Um, and we have you here because you're going to break this down for the audience and show them how you did it. So in order to do that, the first thing I want to do is actually cut to the Blank Slate intro. I want, you I want you to watch it from beginning to end. Pay attention to all the different elements that you're going to see flying across the screen because we're actually going to show you how he keyframed key those elements in the final product. All right, so now that you had a chance to see the final product, how did you do it? All right, well, I started by opening up an After Effects project. Okay. So when you open up After Effects, it automatically makes a project, and your project is what holds everything. I'm going to make a new composition, go up to Composition, New Composition, and as you stated, you wanted a project that was Full HD, 1920 by 1080, and I also made it 24 frames per second just to make it look natural on the eyes. So. We'll open that up, and that is how we get our project started. And I see you have a lot of different elements uh, already in the project. So how do you organize these different elements? I know in Premiere, it's really important that you pay attention to the back end, you know, that you put the files in a proper place so Premiere knows where to find it and you know where to find it. Is it similar in After Effects? Very similar in After Effects. So I actually keep a folder on the desktop or wherever you like to keep it, and I call it either Project Assets or I name it after the project file, and I save, as you can see, our blank slate project file in here, I save all of our text, our font, our videos, anything that I need that in case I need to move the file anywhere, all these files stay with it, After Effects doesn't lose it. So project management is extremely important. Okay, that makes sense. And I know uh, it's good that you include the fonts because if you did have to take this to a different system, not all of the same systems have the same fonts. Now, where do you actually get the elements from? Are you finding these online? Are you building them yourself? So. I tend to stay towards that original side and I prefer to build it myself in Photoshop. But if you're not comfortable building your own in Photoshop, you can always go online, do a quick image search for images that are labeled for reuse with modifications so you're not um, violating anyone's copyright. So if we go back into your project, I know that you know I gave you kind of rough direction in a sense where I said, these are a couple of intros that I like, I'd like to make something in that style, and then I gave you an audio track. So once you have that audio track, what are you doing? What's, the, what's some of the different elements that you started with to create this? So the first thing, as you said, I took that audio track and I just dragged and dropped it right down here in the composition, and we're good to get started. So I started off with the film strip, actually. So we'll take our film strip graphic from the projects, drag and drop it down here. We'll turn off our transparent background. Now you can see our film strip, 
and animation in After Effects is super easy. It all comes down to what are called keyframes, and they're basic points where in your timeline you're saving a property value at a certain point in time. So right now, I'm going to keyframe our position of our film strip, and I'm actually going to move it off the screen, so this will be our starting point. And if I scrub our time slider a little bit forward in time, and I move our graphic element across the screen, After Effects will automatically create a new keyframe where I moved the graphic. So if I scrub back in time, we just made a very simple animation. You built this one film strip here, but you've got a lot of film strips moving in this project. So how did you get them all moving? Did you create them independently? Did you duplicate layers? How did that work? So I actually have, as you said, multiple layers of film strips that fly throughout the screen. And it just starts with one. All I had to do was create that one film strip and duplicate it a bunch of times and animate those different properties that After Effects gives me, opacity, rotation, scale, and position, and just change each one up a little bit to do something different. Okay, and now what about some other elements like this one is a you know a file of an image file that you brought in there and manipulated, but some of the stuff you had to create from scratch inside After Effects, like the box. Yes. So how did you go about animating that? So if we go to our box composition, you can see that our box is made up of four different lines that come together. So if we again create a new composition here, same settings as before, I'll go up to our pen tool and click to drop a point, that's the start of our line, and hold shift to make a completely straight line and drop our second point, and that's what creates our line for our box. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set a keyframe for the position of our box. And in this case, the box was an element that came together into one final piece. So this is a time where I like to work backwards in After Effects and actually start at our finishing point or what our box would look like and where that line's going to end up. So I'm going to keyframe our position here, move backwards in time, and slide this line off the screen. And again, you're doing this working backwards because the final placement is very important for the viewer. Whereas with your film strips, they just came on and off the screen, didn't really matter. You can start from the beginning and whatever. But for this one, with the ending point being really the most important point, you want to work backwards. Is that correct? Exactly. So now if I move forward in time, you'll see that our line comes and finishes exactly where I want it. And I want to make sure that I also turn on motion blur on this line, on the layer, and then also turn on motion blur in this composition. And that gives it just that little bit of blur, makes it look natural as it moves in. Okay, now what about the text? You had a lot of different text layers going on. Can you show us how you put that together? All right, so in our main composition, you can see all these layers of text. Um, there's about 15 different layers of text here, and they all do different things. They fade in, and they also scale up to appear that they're coming at the viewer. So again, it's just simple animation. If we take a look at one of these text layers, go down to Transform, and you can see it's just simple position, simple opacity, keyframed in, keyframed out. The closer the keyframes are together, the faster it happens, the farther they are apart, the slower the animation happens. And I feel like when people look at After Effects, this is the part that intimidates them. Because every time you create something in After Effects, you're making a new layer, and that adds up fast. So what are some tips you can give folks for organizing all these different layers so you don't end up with 100 of them when you open up your project? So organization is absolutely important. You can see we have about 30 layers here, and probably 10 or 15 of them are these text layers right here that are all kind of similar. They have the same purpose. So I can actually select all of those layers down here, go up to Layer, pre-compose, and that will create a new composition to hold all of our layers. We'll click OK, and as you can see, we just flattened it down to one single layer of all of our text. So I can go back and edit these text layers if I need to. So I can double click on this pre-compose layer, and you can see all of our text layers are still editable in this composition. And any changes you make in that's going to affect the main comp? Yes, it will. Now, we talked a lot about the technical aspects of how you create this and how you manage it, but what about the art form? I know for this particular project, it really is just a short music video, right? So can you walk us through how you determined what elements were going to come on the screen when? Sure. So you gave me an audio file to start out with. So actually, if I click this little tab right here, our waveform pops up, and I can see these little blips or pops in our audio. So that's kind of what I use as my basis for animation. If I had a little sound bit that would pop up or get louder, I would have a little flash go off, just something extra to keep the viewer's attention. You always want to make sure that if you, for say, have text pop up, 
that the text is going fast enough that you're keeping people's attention, but not too fast for someone not to be able to read it. So you just want to kind of feel it out and do what feels right in your animation. And that's the art part of it. That's the subjective part, for sure. right? So you know, you're going to have to just kind of go with what feels right. And then when you make something for your client, you're obviously going to have a back and forth as to, as to what works. I think that's a great start for people to be able to gather some information about After Effects and to hopefully now get back to their units, dig into some of their own projects and experiment. Mm -hmm. um, but before we let you go, are there any final tips you have for, for everybody? Well, something really important we didn't talk about, I'd have to say, would be uh, make sure you're saving your files. Save early, save often, and save incrementally. File can always go corrupt, so have multiple versions of that file in multiple places so you don't lose all of your work. Multiple places, that's important too, because you don't want to just keep it all on one hard drive, because yes. hard drives live and die. So, yeah. very good. Well, hey, thanks again for coming out and for giving us the t tips, and I really appreciate you uh, working on this again and, and making that intro. Thanks for having um, me. That's going to be it for this episode. Now, turn this off and get experimenting. Thanks for watching.